Hello and welcome to Designs Fiesta 2012. Uh, my name is Tarek Fidel and my Twitter ID is Delta World. Uh, what we're going to talk today is about responsive web design. So it's all the, the rage now about responsive web design and uh, everyone wants to build responsive web design. But the problem is, is that uh, if you look on the web, about 90-95% of the web is, is, uh, is not responsive at all. Uh, there's a few things that we need to talk about first of all. What is responsive web design? So we're going to have a look at some examples. Uh, there's a website here called uh, Media Queries that is like a gallery of different responsive web design sites. So let's have a look at these to see what they are. Um, so uh, let's uh, go to the web. So I'll launch the browser. And uh, the name of the site is called MediaQueries.es. Okay, so we'll just wait for this one to load. And again, you can uh, visit this website in your own leisure and have a look at some examples. Uh, the idea of the responsive web design is that the website adapts to uh, the device and also adapts to the screen size. And the text and the content and the layout will reflow accordingly. So uh, let's have a look at a few examples to get the idea of how it works. So um, I'm just going to select this first one here, which is the Homeland Security and Governmental Affairs Committee in the US. And uh, let's load this one up. I've got the browser maximized width-wise. Uh, responsive web design is all about the width of the browser rather than the height. Just bear with us whilst the connection is a little bit slow, but we're waiting for it to finish downloading. So the other thing with the responsive web design is that it uses CSS3 uh, media queries to give you the ability to uh, give it responsive. So here we have full width, we have the menu at the top, and uh, we have some graphics here, and we have a changing graphic here, and we've got calendar over there and a search over there. And notice as I resize. Uh, one aspect of responsive web design is the image also resizes and is dependent on the width of the browser as a percentage. Uh, this is new in CSS3. You weren't able to resize the image accordingly, but now you can. And again, as you, if you look on the right, uh, you can see where the calendar bit is. You've got the word more over there is also being resized. Text is reflowing. And... Uh, We'll get to a point, and as you can see, the background him image here is staying in position in relative. Now, this is the bit here. Look, if you notice, there's a change, a shift. And uh, the calendar is no longer visible. But if we scroll down, we can see that the layout has changed. The calendar is still there. It's just further down. And uh, if we resize again, again, you can see the image scaling down and there. See that? There's a shift here. We change the menu into one of those drop downs, which is very good for um, mobile phones as you can get a swipe gesture and then you can actually see the, the menu from there. And we resize it, make it smaller, make it smaller. And as you can see, there's another shift right there. So that's about what we'll count these. So well, there's one, two, three, and four different layouts uh, laid out on this website. So it's very well designed. Okay, so if we look at another example to get an idea. So if we uh, go back here. And uh, here's another one called Stink Digital. So again, we're just waiting for this one to load, and uh, there it is. And kind of using the background cover image feature to have a full uh, fledged image size. So you can see when I scroll down, the image fills the background. Okay, there's a whole series of images here, and I'm going to resize it. And as you can see, when I resize, the image um, stays stationary. Okay. 
and you can see the menu there at the bottom and here you go, notice here there's an animation that animates the text between these two stages okay. and then we're going to come over here and then it resizes again and if we try again that's it okay so that's a simpler example is probably about three one two three Okay, with uh, some CSS3 animations in between. Okay, uh, one more just for good luck. And here's the hair project. Let's maximize this. Okay, this website is in French. Let's turn the translation off. Just wait for it to finish loading. A lot of cases uh, with. Uh, doesn't have to be the case, but a lot of cases with responsive web design are quite image dependent and heavy in size, so they will take a while to download, especially on a slow connection. So here we have the hair project as I resize. Again, they're using the uh, background cover image to fill the complete edge. And again, we've got one, two, three. Four, okay, and five. Okay, so there's five there, um, and you can see from the layout beneath that two columns, and then one column with a CSS3 animation. Okay. Okay. Now each of these, um, if you click on the actual title at the top. Uh, this will take you still within the media queries, but you'll see some information of what they've used uh, to be able to use uh, to create the media query within that. So let me log in. And here, this response web design was created by such and such. Um, and uh, you can see here it's got fluid grids, media queries, flexible images, and response web design. We'll have a look at fluid grids, we'll have a look at the media queries, uh, and uh, if we get time, I'll have a look at some flexible images as well. So let's go back and uh, to our slideshow. And uh, the first uh, thing, the first time I heard the term responsive web design was from a list apart. So let's have a look at this example. Okay, so this is the article from A List Apart, uh, which they first started talking about uh, RWD or responsive web design back in May 2010. And um, the concept has always been around uh, with fluid layouts and uh, using uh, uh, percentages, but this was now using the media queries to completely change the layout depending on the view. And one of the first examples that used this was uh, here. And we can have a look at this example. And as you can see, when I resize it, the images change, okay, which is one feature of responsive web design. So the image are, images are being fluid. Okay. Okay, so um, uh, if we go back to here. Now, it's, it's a relatively simple idea. We'll have a look at how to create responsive web design, but I'm surprised the number of websites that don't use responsive web design. Um, and as you can see, even this website, A List Apart, is not responsive. Um, let's have a look if we go to the BBC. Let's try it with the main site. So here's the BBC. Even the image is not responsive. Uh, let's try Sky.
and just wait for it to load. Okay, so here's Sky, and as you can see, even this website is not responsive. So you can just imagine viewing this on a mobile phone or an iPad. Um, it's not designed for those devices. And uh, let's try um, uh, Academy class. And again, we can see here this is not responsive because when this website was designed, it was before the term uh, responsive web design was available. But if you have a look at Designers Fiesta, and again, we'll wait for it to, to load and download. And here it is downloaded. This here, this website here, is responsive. And uh, whilst we're waiting for it to load, we can actually have a go. And as you can see, one. Two, three, okay. So, oh, four. So it has four responsive layouts available uh, to give you the ability for responsive web design. Okay, which again is quite useful. Um, now, uh, so now that we've seen some examples of responsive web design, but you'll notice that 95 to 99 percent of websites you do come across are not responsive, and this uh, will change. We will see this change. Uh, and happen. So how do we create something that is responsive? Well, first of all, let's have a look at uh, a tutorial, and this is probably one of the best tutorials I've come across that explains how to apply responsive web design. So uh, let me launch this one up. So it's um, the first aspect is you need to add this line here. Now the reason you need to add this line is a lot of cases mobile phones, what they do is if the width of the uh, website doesn't fit um, on the device. What what they what the uh, like the iPhone, for example, makes the whole website shrink, uh, shrink in size uh, in width wise, to the point that you can't read the text. You'd have to zoom in to be able to read the text. Um, so this line here, uh, meta name viewport, initial scale one, basically means match one pixel to one pixel on the device itself. The problem with that is if you don't have responsive web design, um, the, you won't be able to see the whole website and you have to scroll left and right, up and down to be able to see what's going on. Uh, uh, the other option uh, that you need to do is then add uh, the um, HTML structure. Now here they, they do mention of using this option here. and The reason for this is if less than IE9 uh, using the media query.js or respond.js, either or, they both do pretty much the same thing. And this is to make responsive web design backwards compatible for IE6, 7, and 8. This is a bit of JavaScript. Now, if we have a look at this one, just launch it. And uh, if we have a look at downloads, you just download it and put that conditional statement in there, and it will be available. And so you can download it from here. And if we open that, we can then have a look at it. Okay, and here it is. Okay, so it's basically uh, bit script that it measures the width of the browser and then adopts it and tells it to use which case it wants. So there's nothing different that you have to do, you just have to add that in there and then according to the uh, uh, media queries that you do add, it will make it understand, which again is quite useful. Uh, the other one is called respond.js. Okay, so this is the GitHub link here. You can obviously see all of these uh, JavaScript uh, libraries that do exist. You do have to test them uh, just to make sure that everything is okay. OK, 
Okay, so referred to as a polyfill, uh, which uh, allows IE6, 7, and 8 to understand the CSS3 media queries, which again is quite useful. Okay, so let's go back. Um, ah, so where was the tutorial that we were looking at? Let's load it back up again. Okay, and then we add the media queries. The media query is very simple. So basically the idea is uh, if it's maximum width 980, so if 980 pixels or less, it would use this. So use the at media screen. Uh, so that's a, a screen with pixels. And it will use these. And then you might want to say maximum width 700, 700 pixels or less. Uh, you can use this, so it will change. And accordingly, and then you might say uh, for 480 or less, okay, and by placing it in this order, uh, due to the cascade, this will override this one, and this one will override this one uh, when it reaches reaches that. Okay, so the layout changes accordingly. Okay, and then between the open uh, curly brackets, you put your CSS in there, and that will change it uh, depending on what you need it to do. So that's one example of of how to use it. There is another example. So again, from the same tutorial based website so I'm just going to open that and uh, open that in a new window okay and here uh, this is a, a good example, and I tend to use this in my class. Let me just show you the example. So I'm going to open this up in a new tab so you can see what it does. And uh, it, it's orange here when it's greater than 900. And then we resize it down, and it turns blue. It's between 600 and 900. And then uh, turn pink when it's less than 600. This one here turns gray, but it will only be viewed on an iPhone because it tests to see if the device is an iPhone itself. Now how does this all work? And uh, we can see this if we go to a view page source and uh, we can see that there's the media queries, max width, so the maximum width is 600 so this is uh, if it's less than 600 and then min width 900 so if it's 900 or above to use this CSS where it changes the color and if it's between two ranges what you can do is use min width and max width and then we'll use this if you want to be device specific uh, this is for the iPhone you go max device width 480 and then you can actually associate a color with an iPhone there's also a few things you can do as well with the uh, media queries and um, that's over here. If you want to be iPhone 4 specific, and this is for Retina Display, and this is the same for the iPad 3, you can use the Retina Display, and this is here, which is unique. Uh, WebKit Min Device Pixel Ratio 2, okay, where it doubles the pixels per pixel uh, for one. Okay, so you can use it as an external link. It's a link rel style sheet, and then you add that in there. And uh, you can also add another aspect for iPads, and you can basically say orientation colon portrait or orientation colon landscape, and this will give you the ability of changing the responsive web design for your iPad. Okay, so if we go back, have a look at this example now, uh, if we move over. Um, the other aspect that you need to kind of think of is uh, creating uh, fluid uh, images. So, let me just get a example to show you, because a uh, response to web design is also about the layout, but also about uh, the images. Okay, so a list apart has got an example here. Okay, and it's, it's very, very simple. 
All you have to do is basically in the CSS for the image, don't put any image a width, is basically put a width as a percentage. Um, uh, this sometimes works uh, for most browsers to make it work throughout, just basically say width, um, height, uh, colon, alter. We can try this as an example. And so if we select or pick an image and use it as an example, so uh, let's uh, find an image. So I'm going to save this one. To the desktop. Let's call it 3.1 for now. Okay, and come back over here. And if I create a new file, HTML, and then if we save that one on the desktop, put it RWZ. Okay, and we need to add that image. Okay, so if we say image. SRC equals not PNG there. And then let's add some CSS. And let's just target the image with. 40% and test that from there so if we open this up in the browser and as you can see it changes accordingly which is quite good now again uh, you can add another element or property to that and that is height auto this fixes some issue with other browsers. Now what we could do is find out what the original image of, this, uh, of the image is, the size of the image. So if we go to images, okay so it's 270 is the width. We can then say max width to 70 pixels. So we don't get any quality degradation. So as you can see, only scales down, but never up. You can also have a mean width if you want. So that's uh, a new feature. It's very, very simple. And this allows you to create your responsive web design. Now, it's all well and good saying you want to create a website or make a website that's responsive web design. What you really need to think of is you need to put some thought into it. You just need to think of uh, different layouts that would work depending on the width or the device that you're looking at, whether it's an iPad um, or an iPhone or an Android device. So to do that, the, what I've done is I've found some research is looking at this link here which are looking at design patterns. So let me launch this up in a browser and have a look at what I mean by design patterns. <coughs> okay, so here's some responsive uh, design patterns that we can see. The idea is, is um, it starts small. Uh, so work designed for the mobile first. Luke uh, Lebrowski um, uh, came up with the concept of mobile first and uh, you can see his uh, presentation about mobile first here. Definitely worth seeing. He's done a lot of talks uh, and he always suggests or uh, always mentions uh, mobile first. Uh, Facebook, uh, Google um, always design on their mobile first and then work on the way up, but here's his presentation that you can have a look at. He's got a few videos as well that are worth looking at. So uh, start small uh, and work your way up. Okay, so do some wireframes, some examples of what you need to do. 
So here's a few common uh, layout examples for wireframes. There's the Mondrian, which is different sized uh, uh, boxes that fit into a design pattern. So we can see here full width, uh, medium width, and then you've got minimum width. Okay, and as you can see, these boxes would scale down beneath it, and when it's small, they uh, they go all into a column. Okay, so here's a real life example. Then you've also got the basic gallery, which is like a grid. So you've got uh, three three columns wide, and then it becomes two columns wide, and then it becomes a column wide. Here's an example, very good for photographs. Um, and then you've got featured items like a new story uh, board. So you've got loads of space there at the top for the banner, and then you've got four columns, each with an associated image. And then we can see here, when you rejig, you've got the banner, which is shrunk. And notice here the menu appears here. Okay, And then uh, you've got two columns. And then you can shrink it down to one column if you need to. Okay, so here's a real-life example of that. And then you've got the column flip. So the idea with the column flip is uh, you've got these columns over here. Okay, and you've got the menu, you've got a logo, and you've got something over here. And the column flips from uh, 1, 2, 3 to 1, 2, 3, and then you've got the text here at the bottom. And then what used to be here is now over here. And these are just some examples. Obviously, you can var vary these design patterns, uh, but you can look at these and work on them. And here's a, a real-life example of how they are. And then you've got the featured shuffle, which is a mixture of all the beat, uh, pieces from above. Okay, you've got one, two, three, and then you've got an alternating pattern that you've got over here. Okay, and then you've got this design over there. And here's a working example of that. And there's a lot more patterns. You can go and visit Luke uh, Lorowski uh, website, and he's got some more examples on there. So that's definitely worth looking at in terms of thinking of thought patterns uh, for your responsive web design. So, uh, Mondrian, basic gallery, featured items, column fit, flip, and uh, featured shuffle. So we talked about how to make it backwards compatible. Uh, so we looked at the CSS3 media query.js. There's also respond.js. Um, and there's another one called adapt.js. Next thing is I want to talk about is uh, grid patterns. For ages, and this is the one I've been using, is using 960.js, which is a grid system. The problem with this grid system became outdated because it's not responsive. Um, the idea with the grid system, it's used in magazines and newspapers, is you design things to a grid, um, and it's a, it's a grid of columns. And now, the reason for 960, it's a good number that divides well with 12, 16, or 24. And here's an example of a website that's using a grid system. So if we show the grid, this makes things a lot easier to work out when you're working out a layout. Because if you want this one to be a specific width, you don't know if it's going to be 380, 360, or 365. What would be easier if you say, well, I want this one to be four columns wide, this one four columns wide, this one four columns wide. Three columns wide, and this one here is eight columns wide. So you can work things out to lay out of a grid. The, the reason for this is you remove the grid and everything is kind of laid out, it's aligned and it's easier for the eye to make sense of it. It's, it's not haphazard and it follows a pattern. Okay, and as you can see here, this uses a grid system, 12 column grid system. So we have 3, 3, 3 and this one here uses 6, this one here uses 6, this is the full width. This one here is using 3, 5 and this one here is using just 3 on this side. Okay, so, you, it's, it's, so it's a good idea that you start designing these as a wireframe example and then start applying them to uh, the websites to give you the assistance in, the, in terms of what you need to do. So we have here 3333 three, 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 uh, and we have the full width whilst this one here is using 6 and 6 as well. Okay, so if we look over here, again this is a 16 column one, a bit more detailed. So this one's using 4, 7. And this one here is we're using three, six, seven, eight, um, and again it all kind of fits in. Whilst this one here is using four and four. Okay, and again, please do carry on seeing some examples. Now, so this is what a grid system is. Uh, recently, what they've done is they've added adapt.js, which is some adaptive CSS, 
I'm not a big fan of this one because it's not really, it doesn't really make the older browsers understand uh, responsive. Uh, it's a manual way of applying responsive where you have different grid systems and then uh, you have to associate those with the, the JavaScript. Um, the better one that's kind of superseded this one is man78.js, uh, GS, because it now has responsive web design built into the system of the grid system. Uh, so if we want to see an example of this, so here we have a website. Let me just uh, expand this one wider. And we have a 1378 grid system. And this one switches using the media query to 1218, 978, 748, 300, and so on. We can see that the grids change. You have 16 columns at 58 pixels each, 48 pixels at 16, 12 pixels at 54 each, 12 pixels at 44, 8 pixels at 27. Okay, And then you can rejig your layout accordingly. And all the resources are available to download from the 978.js. So if we have a look, 978.js. Again, 978.gs. Okay, uh, so you can basically download the templates, and here's all the different templates and what they're used for small screen, mobile, popular, roomy, and speciality. Okay, so you can get the Photoshop files. Uh, and then design your grid layout according to that. <coughs> and uh, there's some stats here that you can actually see in terms of width and what they work for. So we can see here uh, for tablets on 978 landscape, 748 portrait, and then 300 is for uh, smartphones. Okay. And for different screen and different monitors, you've got these different uh, grid systems that are available. Okay, and to, to use the code, there's the example, and that's all you'd need to do to add the, the grid system, and this gives you the ability. And again, you can switch it, and here's the different grids accordingly. Okay. And this gives you the ability of creating a grid system. Okay, so let's have a look at some... Uh, <coughs> Uh, examples of what we're going to talk about is basically using uh, jQuery to be able to create it with that. So uh, this is sometimes referred to as the Pinterest style. First I saw this was on Pinterest. If you visit Pinterest.com Just wait for it to load. Okay, and we can see in this example here we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, and as I resize it, okay, it goes to four and then goes to three. Okay, and it stops at that. Yeah, but it, is, it goes as wide as it needs to be uh, width-wise. Now the idea here is is not only just that it's responsive, but you can see that the uh, each of these fit quite nicely and is scalable depending on how high the image is, which is great for a gallery uh, because it fills every aspect of the design. Uh, the width is exactly the same throughout, but the height is scalable. It, it, is, it changes. Um, for each image. The other thing as well is as you scroll down it automatically starts to bring in the images as it needs to. So um, <clears throat> how, how can we apply an example of this? And This is a lot better than using CSS floats. 
So I'm going to be introducing to a jQuery plugin called Masonry. So if we go to masonry.desandro.com. Let's wait for this one to load. Let's try that one again. Masonry.desandro.com. Just bear with me with the slow connection that we have here. And uh, here we have the masonry example. So if we used CSS floats for varying heights but same width images, uh, what you would get is a layout like so, which isn't as good. So what we have after we apply the masonry is basically it measures the heights of the different images and finds out if this here would fit in this space. If it does, it moves it up and so on and so on. So you get a much nicer layout. And as you can see, this example here of how this whole website is built is using masonry, which is very, very similar to the example on top of that. Uh, if we resize it, you see how everything rejigs into place, okay, which is part of the responsive web design. So if you're looking for a gallery-based site to use this feature, then this is in a very, very useful example. Uh, there are many options that are available to this. So you can basically have uh, a basic single column. Again, this is with text. And as you can see, it rejigs. Uh, Multi-column. Okay, so as you can see, you've got some examples of narrow and wide columns. You can use it with images. Here's some examples of images. And as you can see, and this is how... Uh, how it works with um, Pinterest. Here's an example of a blog-based layout. Okay, and as you can see, it rejigs it accordingly. And you can animate it with jQuery if you want to. Okay, and these are all options that can be customized in the JavaScript. Okay, and you can animate it with CSS animations as well. Okay. And you can use Modernize to detect whether it should animate it using CSS or JavaScript or jQuery and so on and so on. There's a lot more options that are available. You can again explore how to use this. But let's have a look at an example that we've got here. This is the example that we're going to run. And so I'm going to show you how this is built. So we have a series of images here, and as I resize it, it rejigs accordingly. Okay, so let's have a look at how this is built. So we'll look at it from the HTML first of all. So we have here in the HTML, we have a div, uh, which would be a container. Inside each div would be a series of divs, each one with a class of item. Okay, and each one holding an image. Some images will be twice as wide, okay, and each one that is twice as wide will be see it will be represented as featured, okay, to allow it to take double width. Okay, so once you've done that, we're going to link it to the jQuery library, and then finally we're going to link it to the masonry uh, plugin, and then we're going to write our own script after that. Now. Uh, we're using uh, here a template. The template we're using is HTML5 boilerplate because it has all the necessary files for us to work with, like modernizer and normalize.css. Okay, so we're using modernizer and we're also using normalize.css to give it that cross-browser compatibility. 
So if we look at the bottom here, we're uh, oh, sorry at the top. We're linking it here to Modernizer, and uh, if we look in the JS folder, we can see that we've got Modernizer there, and there's our uh, jQuery masonry, and with the normalize.css, which is including in the styles.css. Okay, it has part of the HTML5 boilerplate. This all comes predefined, so I'm not going to touch it. I'm going to leave it as the default. And uh, the idea of normalize.css is it makes the CSS behave the same throughout um, all browsers. Uh, and the bit that we're going to change or add is from here onwards. Okay, so what we can see here uh, is we've got, first of all, the item. Okay, display block, float left. Okay, so we're using the float. We've defined the width, so it's a set width, as we said before. The width will be 300, given it's a margin of 20 pixels. On the right left, the right and bottom. So it's 320, including the uh, gutter. And then we've added some CSS transitions. Okay, so this is the animations for CSS when it does change position. Featured will be 620. Why 620? Because it's the margin 20 plus 300 times 2. Okay, and so it's twice as wide. Okay, and the images are 300, the same as the item. Okay, and the featured image again is 620. Okay, and the height is set to auto. Okay, um, everything else is uh, pretty standard. Okay, and we have here uh, the media queries for responsive web design. Okay, so, um, but we'll leave the uh, plugin to work out the width accordingly. So, how do we get this one to work? Well, if we look at the uh, script.js, we're using document.ready, so we're pulling up the DOM, and then we're looking at the original content, we're loading up the masonry method, setting the column width to 320, because it's the 300 plus the 20, and then the item selector will be item. It's got a fit width, true, and we want it to animate, but by basically using modernizer. Check to see if CSS transitions. If it doesn't exist, then animate it. Okay, otherwise it will animate using CSS. And then uh, have the images reload at every time it resizes. And that's pretty much it. Again, the documentation is at masonry.js. And uh, if we try this, we can see this working accordingly, which is a great example uh, for making websites use this example. And we can see uh, if we go to masonry.cassandra.com, you can see lots of websites that already use these examples. Okay, so here's an example dig by using masonry. And as I resize, well, oh, maybe not. Maybe they've changed it. But let's have a look at another example. Zappos. Wait for it to load. Okay, and as you can see, it rejigs the layout accordingly. And this one here is using masonry for that. Okay, brilliant. Thank you very much for watching this presentation. And there will be more to come. There is a, another example, uh, apart from masonry, and uh, this one here is called Isotope. And if we visit Isotope, it's just another example that you can use. And it has some other options. So uh, it's worth trying out both of them and seeing which one suits what you need to do. Again, this is also based on jQuery to give you the ability of creating this. Okay.
Thank you.